Who would you care about this, this last uh, uh, window that can collect the Estonian Tamari Bank? <laughs> we ask to ask them to let us. Uh, So you can go and okay, you just uh, go back to the um, uh, no, next one. This one, okay, no, 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 no. Voilà, c'est bon, tout démarre, ça y est, maintenant c'est bon. La souris ne manque pas de chiffres. Est-ce que c'est le meilleur angle Hi, Piacenza, we could see your camera. Can we test also your sound, please? Hi, can you hear us? Ah, uh, yes, perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We'll wait a little, some minutes more, so we start. We're still missing Kwakiwa and Catania.
Hello, Wakiwa. We could see you. Can we test your sound as well? Hi. Can you can you hear us well? Yes. Hi, Hi Denise. Hi. We can hear you. Thank you. So we'll wait uh, two or three more minutes before starting because we're still missing Catania and Moanagwe. So we'll give a few more minutes for them to join and then we we'll start the video conference. Thank you. Hi, Raul. Hi, Raul. Um, we, we are also uh, trying to upload the, the data yes. online. Uh, so maybe we have some questions. So we are uh, going to upload the, all the data sets of the, every student uh, one by one, and then we produce the final plot. Uh, Yes, you so you go to, to the activities. So apparently we can upload only one file. So we can cut the, the different files for different groups of students, or we can upload more than one file. You can upload more than one file, yes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. This is something so not... we are doing that uh, in the meanwhile we wait. Okay, no, no problem. You can can do it. So you do you go to Vakiwa for the upload and then you your body of files, that's okay. Hello, Nicholas. I can see you. Can you? Can you? Hello. Hi. Yes. Hello. I can hear you fine. Thank you. Okay. We will wait a few minutes to start. We will, we're still missing Catania. Okay. Okay. Thanks.
Hello, Catania, we can see you. Uh, cannot hear you. Hi, Catania, can you test your sound so that we can start? Okay, now we are having trouble to hear you, so please wait one moment. Please. I can hear you, yes, with much, much noise on the background. I hope you can hear us as well. Hi, hi Mario. Okay, so I think everything is set now. So we can start this video conference regarding this masterclass event with the Pierre Observatory. My name is Raul. I'm a researcher at OIP Portugal. Uh, it's an institute of particle and astroparticle physics. And I'm also a member of the Pierre Rodet collaboration. We have also Alexandra. So I'm Alexandra. I'm a PhD student also working within the Pierre Roger Collaboration. And uh, I'm also part of LIP here in Portugal. And with us, we also have Nicolas, we are. Uh, if you want to introduce yourself very quickly, Nicolas, talking from a while. Hello, everybody. Yes. My name. My name is Nicolas Leal. I am an electromechanical engineer and I work here at uh, Argentina at the observatory. And I will give you a, a short uh, tour for, uh, of the campus later. Thank you very much. So let me share my, my screen just to show you. Um, what is the agenda for this video conference? So after these uh, short welcome presentations, we'll have the discussion of your results, and then a few time for questions and answers, where you'll be able to, to, to ask questions to, to us about your activity, about OGE, about being a scientist. And uh, for, for that, Case I would recommend that uh, at each side you could decide on one or two spokes students, spokespersons, in order to to do this exchange. So after the question and answers part, there will be the virtual visit to the PRG Observatory, as Nicolas has just informed, and we will end with a final quiz that you can uh, uh, follow and uh, um, execute uh, using your your cell phones. You just need an internet connection. So, uh, today uh, we have students from Milan, actually Piacenza, very nearby Milan, in Italy. We have students from uh, Wakiwa, also in Italy, uh, Catania, in Italy, and Constantin in Argelia. We are moderating the video, video conference from Braga, so uh, LIP has uh, Installations here. It's one of the many institutes uh, throughout the world where uh, there are members of the Pierre Project Corporation working this data. And we also have the observatory in uh, Moargui, Argentina. So let's go to the point and let's start with the discussion of your results. You have been executing this analysis to reconstruct real events obtained uh, with the Piaget Observatory concerning uh, uh, cosmic rays of the highest energies, so extreme energy cosmic rays. You've been reconstructing the, their energies, their arrival directions, and then applying selection criteria in order to try to answer this, this question, this big question, 
of, of, of the science nowadays that is what what is the origin in the universe of the ultra energy cosmic rays so let's see uh, what were your results we may start for example uh, with uh, the students from Milan, uh, Piacenza. So I will see the analysis from Milan. We can see that 10 groups have uploaded their results and the number of events were about 414. So I can now select one, one, one of these groups, for example, group number four, ra chosen randomly, okay? And I can see the sky map obtained with these, uh, with results from this group. So we have 47 events that were accepted for, uh, after reconstruction for the final analysis. And we can see here sky maps in different uh, coordinate systems. And uh, for example, in galactic coordinates, we can see here the point of the Milky Way with the Milky Way in the center. And then we can see the projections in these sky maps of the arrival directions of the events that you selected. So, um, to me one, let me ask to uh, student spokespersons in, in me one, by analyzing these uh, sky maps of one of your groups, uh, what, what are your conclusions? Let me know. Okay, so uh, from Milan and Piacenza, actually, I will leave uh, the microphone. To okay. Gianmarco and Eleonora, uh, who are here on, you can see on them on the, yeah, I'm uglier, so I just put the webcam on them. Okay. Yeah, so my question was, uh, so by looking at these results, what conclusions can you, can you take or do you take? How, how would you uh, interpret these, these individuals? Yeah that we can see uh, any cosmic ray on the north hemisphere and that there are parts where they are more frequent than other yes that's okay, so uh, maybe looking at the uh, control map we can see as she said that uh, the density is higher obviously in the lower part um, whilst in the galactic one, they're all concentrated in the area well, on the right part of the map. There's uh, a, um, a thicker strip, we could say, of, of, of rays coming from that area. Yeah, no, that's that's a very that, that's correct, and that's a, an interesting point to to mention. So. Regarding the fact that you, you've already pointed out that you, we can see here on the equatorial map that there are no points coming from the northern parts. And this actually, this is the same region that corresponds to this left side on the galactic uh, coordinate system. Uh, we'll leave uh, the answer to that question for later. Let me just point out the other, the, the other point that you mentioned. You see some, uh, they, are, they are more frequent. These points are more frequent in some regions, but uh, they seem to be quite spread throughout all all all, all these regions where, where you have points, right? Uh, I mean, could you say that you they would be clustering around the um, Pacific region, for example? Uh, I think it's very clear that obviously they are not concentrating along the galactic plane, right? They seem to be dispersed and not falling. The, the, the arrival of the rest is not following this structure that is clear, clearly seen here, that is the galactic point. So we could already conclude that, that the arrival of the rest seem to, to be spread uh, through different regions of the universe. And there's, at least from this point, we can, from this plot, we can already uh, infer that there seems not to be, not a, there not to be a correlation with the galactic point. Thank you, thank, thank you very much. So, in fact, these are this is just a single result from one group which analyzed. We can now try to to see if, for example, these conclusions that you already draw uh, stand if we now combine the results from many from many many groups. For example, we can go back 
and see the analysis for all the groups from E1. Okay, you can see these are the results. Now let me go back once again and, for example, move to Wakiwa. Okay, let's see the analysis from Wakiwa and the sky maps with all the events, uh, 120, well, we already have 128 events, and we can see <coughs> already uh, many points spread. So maybe now we could... Uh... Yeah, now we can go to the next questions. Now for the, the next um, a group of students from Vacula. So I have a question because when we uh, saw the previous maps, I was wondering if you could tell there's what was already mentioned at this point, there is regions in the sky maybe that we don't see any events coming from. Yes. And my question would be, yes, we expect yes. or not. Yes. And then uh, the second question would be, do you have any uh, idea or any suggestion of why that is? Why don't we see certain regions in the sky? Okay, so we take the, can you hear us? Yes, perfectly. Yes. So we, uh, so just okay. come to this side. So, so we have uh, three volunteers. We have Andrea, Alessandra and Alessandra. So we had three, so we wanted to have all of them so since they volunteered for that. And they wanted to give some uh, um, introduction. So I wanted to let them speak about uh, what they so they, they wanted to tell us what they learned today. So just uh, give them just a few minutes because they, they had this idea to, to tell us uh, what, uh, what they learned today. And then maybe we pass uh, to the uh, discussion of the data. Okay, that's okay, perfect. So Thank you, go ahead, yes. Hi, so we're two different schools from La Vila. And today we took part in the Pierre Roger master class. And our day was divided into two different parts. Uh, first of all, uh, the professors uh, explained to us the different partners uh, behind uh, the, these projects, such as GSSI and the Grand Sasso Institute Laboratories and Laguila University of Physics and Chemistry. And uh, then we talked about the theory uh, behind the cosmic rays, and they uh, also explained a bit of history uh, behind uh, the, the, the cosmic rays. Uh, we talked about, for example, uh, really important sciences who had uh, an impact on the development of the physics of particles, for example, uh, Columb in the 18th century, and uh, Victor Hess. Uh, Erico Fermi, and until the 1937 with the first discovery of a, of a muon. Uh, today we divided um, we divided into couples, and uh, we analyzed the data that they get, that were given to us, and uh, we successfully analyzed about 20 data uh, for couples, and we put them together into a graph. And uh, we use uh, uh, parameters such as uh, the energy that should be over um, eight electrons per volt, and uh, we and also the number of uh, tanks that should be over five. So, uh, from what we expected, the um, cosmic ray comes from uh, the so-called hot spot. But uh, in our graph that we created with our data, uh, the hot spot weren't so clear. In fact, uh, the data were spread all over the place. And uh, in the first uh, graph, there were a uh, clear separation between a uh, clear zone with no data and no point, oh. and uh, another uh, big part, the second half, with uh, a lot of data. This is because the Pierre uh, Azure uh, detector is placed in the south uh, of the Earth, so it can detect uh, data over that region. Um, but we can see also in the second graph that that uh, the hotspots are not so clear, but they can see it. You can kind of see it. Okay, very well. Uh, was it Alessandro that spoke uh, last about the? Yeah. yeah so um, you you all spoke perfectly well about what is happening, and just to reiterate what was already said. Uh, the idea here is that we, when we look at the sky, we're not seeing the entire sky because we have the Earth 
that's blocking part of the sky and with because of that uh, the observatory because it's uh, the observatory is in the south hemisphere there will be permanently a part of the sky that will be blocked off by the earth and so we do not expect to have any events coming from that yeah, region exactly and that's why if there were any events coming from that reason region would be uh, uh, quite strange yeah Thank, thank you very much, and also for your very interesting presentation of what you did today. Uh, thank you. So, so now we will give the word to Catania, that is also with us. Uh, let me go the results from Catania as well. Uh, okay, 20 groups have uploaded with about uh, almost 200 events. You can see here the same pattern. And uh, so, my okay, my, my question would be, so, okay, we already understand why we don't have events on these parts, and my question would be more, okay, so, okay, what, what can we do? This is a difficult question, but uh, can, can we take any conclusions about this dispersion, and how could we move forward? I don't know if Catania uh, wants to comment anything about this, or also share uh, your experience during during this day. Uh, I I see, ah, yeah, I can see Catania. I cannot hear Catania, but I can see two two students. We just cannot hear you. We can see you, see you very well. We just cannot hear you. Uh, can ah. you hear me now? Yes. Okay, uh, so um, we are two students from Catania and uh, today we participate in uh, this project and um, we analyzed some data from the, um, from the detectors and uh, as we can see uh, in uh, every instance we uh, look at a homogeneous pattern that forms both in the equatorial plane and in the galactic plane. Uh, but there aren't uh, um, there aren't a lot of data for uh, for us to take some conclusions about these uh, studies. We can't uh, pinpoint a specific location that could be a sergeant of uh, cosmic rays, and uh, that's why that that's uh, a problem because we need a lot of data to. Um, to ensure that there actually is a strong uh, surge of uh, cosmic rays. Also, today talking about uh, our master class, uh, we learned about some uh, history of the ray cosmics, uh, and uh, also we um, looked at some models uh, to, you know, point out <coughs> what are the uh, main features of them, and uh, these were our, were our data. Very well. Thank you very much. And let me take this opportunity to tell on what you said. So you pointed out the fact that, okay, these are, you, you cannot uh, point out any particular region because we don't have enough data. And that's the way to go. So we need more data to uh, gather and gather more statistics to see if this dispersion will correspond to, I mean, some regions where we actually have more events than other regions. We cannot see these because already because we don't have any data this is just bringing us the attention to i mean the need to have more statistics and perform uh, uh, an analysis based on more events let me try to explain you very quickly how we do this so the first thing is to okay we cannot do this uh, we cannot analyze very directly these uh, points these discrete points there are all directions so so what we do is to just consider each point in the sky map and count the number of events which are in the wider region um, around this point. And we do this for all the map so that at each point we gather information not from the its, its point itself but from regions around. Okay, It's a way of smoothing and get more statistics for a given region. And then we obtain with your data as what we call a smooth count map. So the information is the same but we have here a pattern of column of, of, of color that tells us that in brighter color, yeah, well, we have more events around these regions than 
on the, the darker colors uh, on black where we don't have uh, anything as you see okay and we start seeing a pattern appearing in fact you see that we have a, a much brighter region at this point than around and you see even even uh, on the region where we have uh, events we seem to have uh what we could call a hot spot at this point which i'm showing but we have to take uh, we, we have to be careful here because as Alexandra just uh, explained the earth is blocking part of the sky uh and uh, the, the other part of the sky is accessible but it is not accessible not all the points on the on the sky which are accessible are accessible the same way there are some regions of the sky which observatory is looking at for for longer periods of time and of course if the events are coming from all the universe dispersed if we look during more time for a given region we'll have more events on that region and this is exactly what uh, what we are seeing so before proceeding with an the analysis and taking conclusions we have to apply a correction that is correcting for the exposure of the of the observatory to the to the sky and if we see a map of this exposure this is what we have here you see that there there are there are these regions of the sky where the observatory sees for more time and it has higher exposure and then there are regions where it is, it's, it is not seen at all so there, and there's this gradient and in fact what you are seeing your results after the smoothing is uh, is just reflecting these these gradients of the exposure so this is not telling us information about where the sources of the ultra energy cosmic rays are in the universe this is just in the first stance giving us information on, on what are the regions of the sky which are looking during more time so we have to divide this map with your results by the exposure in order to have a, a corrected uh, map with the with with the flux of cosmic rays from different directions and we will show this just now uh, combining we have here Constantin as well and now we'll go to Constantine for a question but we'll show the analysis of all combined because we want the total the we want to maximize the statistics so we'll combine all results from Milan, Wakua, Catani, Constantin we could see also here the analysis for, for Constantine but you, you see that you all follow you all take the same same conclusions but now we'll see all the events combined from the four places you have almost 1000 events that's very good and okay you see here all the events after the smoothing and then we'll divide by the exposure map and we get this smooth flux map exactly so, so for the last question for Constantin, I give you maybe the hardest question but also maybe the most interesting one in the sense that now we have corrected for everything we know we have our final results and my challenge to you is for you to take on our job for a second and if you were to analyze this these results what conclusions could you or would you make so would you say there are certain regions in the sky where uh, there appears to be more uh, uh, cosmic rays coming uh, um, or more sources of cosmic rays or do you think they're coming from all over the place at the same fluxes uh, hello we are students from Haria high school we are representing algeria from constantine so we have participated in the uh, reconstruction of events from the Pierre Auger uh, observat Observatory, and uh, we will try to uh, analyze the results. So uh, as we can see, we can see that the points are located uh, in, the uh, in the south under the equator line, and this is due to or because of the uh, the the, the uh, uh, Pierre Auger Observatory, which is located in the south, so we can't uh, uh, we can't uh, uh, see the other part of the sky. I mean the north. That's why the north uh, there is no uh, detective events in the north. And also we can say that uh, uh, 
they are isotropic uh, the, the points. So we can't, we don't have a specific place or we don't know uh, the origin of uh, cosmic rays, but we can say that they are not coming from uh, the sun because uh, we can see that the direction is, it isn't from the sun. And we can also say that they are not coming from our galaxy because if they are coming from our galaxy, we will uh, see that the detected the, or the points will be uh, situated on the front of uh, our ga the the, uh, the galactic band. Uh, so uh, yeah, so we don't have a specific uh, uh, answer about the origin of this cosmic rays, but we can say that maybe they are from they are coming from supernovas or they are coming from supermassive like the black holes. Uh, these are just predictions, so we don't know exactly. The origin of cosmic rays, and I think this is the uh, the um, the purpose of this uh, master class is to uh, try to help the uh, PFOG to find the uh, specific origin of uh, cosmic rays. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a perfect question, perfect, perfect answer. Uh, you touched on so many things. I'm going to try to keep up with you, and um, so. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. We can, one of the first things we can say is that that these uh, particles, the, the particles with the highest energies we know of, uh, they do not appear to be coming from the sun because we know exactly where the sun is and we see them coming from other directions. We also see very clearly, as we already has been said, that they are not coming from. Uh, they don't appear to be coming from the galaxy, as they don't. But when we see these maps, either by the galactic coordinates or with the, the equatorial coordinates, they do not appear to be coming from the galactic plane, which is what we would expect if they were coming from the uh, 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 galaxy. But we can also, so if they're not coming from our solar system, they're not coming from the sun, they're not coming from the galaxy, we are by exclusion uh, coming to our conclusions from what they may be coming from. So uh, that leaves us with that their source must be extragalactic. And when we take a look at these maps, uh, I agree with you, it's, it's very hard to see, to say uh, one specific region uh, of the sky where they appear to be coming the most. They come from everywhere, but you can see here in this, uh, the, the color diagram, you can see the flux uh, uh, changes and we have regions which are hotter and regions that are colder. And you can maybe say there is a, 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 this large region that appears to be hotter and a region that appears to be colder. So maybe those are our hotspots. But if we take a look at the last maps, there's something we need to be very careful when uh, doing any kind of study where we're looking at a large number of events is the significance, uh, st the statistical significance we are uh, of the data we are collecting. So we need to know how sure we are of the results we are getting. And we can only be so sure as the number of uh, events we are uh, watching, right? So even with all of your results combined, we are not still looking at that much data that allows us to have a very clear picture of where these uh, events are coming from. So for that, we need to... Yeah, we need to collect more data. And in fact, uh, the public data of the, of the PRG Observatory, which is the one you have analyzed today, is only 10% of the total data that has been acquired. Uh, I, I will show you now what would be the result of this analysis? What is the result of, the, of this analysis performed with the full data from the PRG Observatory? This has been published in a scientific journal. And uh, you can see here the, the final sky map that the PRG Observatory obtained, uh, analyzing the full data set. And uh, this is in equatorial uh, uh, coordinates. This has a very high statistical significance. You see the, the, the number of events here is so high that the fluctuations in color that we see uh, are not dominated by the, by the lack of statistics, by the lack of events. So we have enough events to, to be sure that this pattern is a real pattern that is giving us information of where the sources are. 
you've already told us that the stars that are spread throughout are not coming from the sun or from the Milky Way, so they are spread throughout all the universe, coming from other, uh, I mean, uh, from where, we don't know. But what this, this, this clear pattern allows us to conclude is the following. You can see that this is a clear pattern, or this part of the sky, this is a dipole pattern, this part of this red part of the sky tells us that there are more uh, cosmic rays uh, arriving from this part of the sky than the opposite part of the sky which points to a higher concentration of sources on this part of the sky. And we know that if we study the distribution of galaxies in the universe, and we look at where are the, let's say the galaxies which are closer to our own galaxy, the Milky Way, we, see, we get a dipole uh, very similar to this one. We would see that most of the nearby, I mean, if we, most nearby galaxies would be on, on this region, and this region would respond to not, would not, not have so many galaxies close to the Milky Way. So if we would find a way to generate a, a sky map, a color sky map with the distribution of galaxies weighted on their distance to our own galaxy, we would get something like this. So this is direct evidence that the sources of these particles are galaxies outside the, the Milky Way, are the galaxies. We don't know still uh, which type of galaxies. So these, there are many uh, people, uh, even inside the Pelosico relation, that are working in order to try to understand with more or different analysis, try to understand exactly which type of galaxies, uh, if these are galaxies with uh, supermassive black holes and active galactic nuclei in the center, or other kind of galaxies are responsible for this, which ones. But this is a clear indication that the sources of these particles are galaxies outside, not our own galaxy, galaxies in the universe. Okay, so this is your is the result of the full statistics. So let me hand my congratulations to you for, for your uh, results, for your uh, uh, experimental activity, and for this very interesting discussion. We are five minutes beyond schedule, but before we go to Nicolas, so he shows us the observatory, let me just uh, ask uh, from uh, any of your, uh, any of the sites, Piacenza, Wakiwa, Catania, or Constantine, if there, are any, if there is a question or other that you want to, to ask us, a general question, or if you want to ask us before we go to the virtual visits. If that is the case, please raise your hand and uh, we can we can answer. May I see Constantine? Yes, you can. Yes. So please, I have a, a question. Uh, what are the corresponding astronomical objects in this region where there are extra density of cosmic rays? Are there significant? Okay, so we know that um, uh, in these, these regions, there are many, many galaxies. Most of, I mean, there's a higher concentration of nearby galaxies from these parts of the sky. And uh, actually, uh, the main um, there are two types of galaxies that are typically searched for when more uh, located uh, searches are, are performed for trying to find the, the sources, so smaller uh, searches for smaller regions of the skies. And this corresponds to galaxies with active uh, nuclei, the AGNs, or galaxies which are called starburst galaxies, where uh, these are galaxies which have, which have uh, uh, <laughs> um, which are characterized by having uh, a number, I mean, stars being formed, the higher um, uh, typically higher rate of, of stars being formed than, than the average galaxy. So these are typically the two types of, uh, of, of possible sources that are being studied the most, studied the most as, as possible point so sources of yeah. particles. But there is no lacking in models and a hypothesis for what they may be the sources, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe just to explain what are AGNs, the, yeah. the, the active So the idea is that there, there is a the black hole in the center of the galaxy in that case. So that's why we say, yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much for answering me. I have. Uh, I will let my classmates uh, to tell to tell you another question. Thank you for. Uh, uh, why there is no modern uh, observatory uh, in the north in order to cover all the planets and all the sky? Actually, actually, there is there is uh, an observatory in the northern hemisphere, which uh, is in the United States, the telescope array. Uh, it is smaller than the observatory, and it, and it allows, in fact, to co to by combining with the data and the result of Angé uh, to have uh, a full sky map with all the regions of the sky covered. In fact, the idea, the original idea for the Pierre Observatory was to build it to one observatory as it is in Argentina and another one in the northern in the north in the northern hemisphere. But for practical reasons, this was not possible. Only the one in Argentina was built. But nowadays, there is also this telescope array in Utah, in um, the United States, which allows to cover also the northern part of the sky. Thanks for this interesting question as well. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so for much. giving us the opportunity and the chance to participate in this amazing uh, masterclass. Thank you so much. Yeah, great. That's, that's great. So now uh, we go to Nicolas. He will take us to Mawarwe and will show us the the observatory. Nicolas, the stage is yours. Hello. Uh, well, first of all, let me congratulate all the uh, all the work that you have done uh, analyzing the data. Uh, but now let me show you the, the background of the data, how the data arrives to your computers and all the all that travel starts here at the um, central acquisition system. Let me switch my camera. I hope that you can see it. So this is the, yes. the central data acquisition system. This is where uh, some of the scientists here at Malarwe uh, start to make the data acquisition. This room that you can see here that is closed by some, some glass is the where all the servers uh, are located. Those servers uh, uh, acquire all the data and store it and every day the, the data that is stored here is uh, sent to, to Lyon in France. So every scientist can uh, use the data to, to make some analysis. This is the, the location of the, um, the computers that the shifters uh, used to, to make the, the operation of the fluorescence telescopes that uh, are looking into the sky and, and can see the, the cosmic ray uh, fluorescence light in the, in the air. The, the fluorescence detectors are uh, not uh, completely autonomous. They need some, some uh, uh, scientists or some technician to operate it. So every, every month, uh, there are scientists coming uh, to Malarwe to make the operation of the telescopes. So in those five screens, you can see the, the status of each one of the the telescopes. And in the computers uh, below, we are looking at some events of the source space detectors. I don't know if you can see it, but this is the signal of, of one of the events, all the, the detectors that were involved, and the map there of all the, the surface detector that uh, could see the, the event. This is one of uh, and even from from last week. Um, well, uh, let's keep going with the with the visit. And now going to the the offices. Here we have the offices of our physicists, from the people that fix all the 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 communication system. This is our campus. Here is where we have our breakfast. And now I'm going to show you some of the detectors downstairs.
please let me know if you can hear me still. Yes, yes, we can hear you and we see that it's a beautiful day in Mawarga. I think we lost uh, Nicolas. Let's let's wait a little bit to see if it's the connect. surface detector. Nicolas, I think your connection is not very good at this point. We cannot hear you. Okay, but you can see on this. Oh. Okay. I am back. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so I think we can hear you now. We lost your connection for one minute, but I think you yes, can go. Uh, I went outside and I lost the Wi-Fi connection. Okay, this is the, the surface detector, Enrique Gabriela. Uh, this is uh, a real uh, surface detector, but it's placed here only for, for outreach. And you can see here a detector with also an SSD, which is a surface scintillator detector. It's a detector that is uh, assembled with optical fibers and scintillators. Those scintillators uh, produce a small amount of light when they are uh, struck by a, by a muon or an electron. And all, all that signal goes to this collector of light. I hope that you can see it. So there you can see all the optical fibers that are coming from the inside of the detector. And the lights end in this region. And here we put uh, a silicon uh, photomultiplier that is capable of acquiring the, the signal of that light. This is another project. It is called AERA. It's a detector of cosmic ray, but it uses another uh, technique that is using the, the radio signal that is produced by the cosmic ray when it uh, goes through the atmosphere. And now I'm going to show you the, the fully upgraded detector, which is uh, a surface detector with other two detectors. But you can see in the background is the building where all the surface detectors were assembled. 15 years ago, approximately. Here you can see the surface detector in the bottom, the scintillator in the middle, and the radio detector on the top. This is a fully upgraded uh, detector. The, the surface scintillator detector are uh, already deployed in the field, and the radio antennas are being deployed right now. Okay, this is parking lot. I don't know how are uh, with the time. Uh, you still like have two or three minutes if uh, you want to show something. Okay, no. I can go to the visitor center. Yeah. What you saw already was uh, like a VIP visit because this is a scale model of a small part of the observatory. There you can see an array of surface detector. On top of the detectors, some antennas. The fluorescence detector in the corner. And underground, maybe you can see a light. This is a muon detector that is buried at 2.3 meters underground. That detector only detects muons because all the 
electrons are filtered by the by the ground. There you can see the the basket of the balloon uh, representing the the discoverings of uh, Victor Hess, and inside this this basket we have uh, our virtual reality glasses. With those glasses. You can see here uh, in the virtual reality uh, how a, a cosmic ray shower produced in the field. Here we have some scale models of the surface detector. The liner or the, the plastic bag that is inside the tank which is filled uh, with a, a ultra pure water. This is a scale model. Here you can see a photomultiplier. The photomultiplier is the device that can transform the, the small amount of light produced inside the bag to an, an electrical signal that is analyzed by the, by the electronics. This is the photomultiplier of the surface detector. And this is the, the area of the fluorescence de detectors. You can see here a scale model of the building. The building consists in six telescopes that are pointing 800, uh, 180 degrees with those six cameras. This is the photomultipliers of the fluorescence detectors, which are uh, smaller than the, the surface detector. And this is the mirror, one quarter of the mirror, that actually is placed inside each one of the cameras. There you can see me. The actual mirror measures four meters tall and four meters wide. There you can see some visitors making the tour and seeing some information in the, in the screen. And finally, a timeline where you can see here, as I mentioned before, the, the famous experiment of Victor Hess and also why PRJ Observatory is called in the honor of uh, Pierre and all the the other uh, significant facts that occur like so that's it I don't know if you have any any question thank thank you very much Nicholas that was great uh, we maybe have time for one uh... One question to Nicholas about the observatory. If, uh, some some student at uh, Miwan, Katania, Wakil, or Konstantin wants to ask. Well, I, I don't see any hands and raised. So, ah, okay, I see there from uh, Konstantin. Yes, please. You you, you are muted. Ah, okay. Uh, so can I ask a question? Yes, please. So, uh, did the Pierre Auger, after 15 years of working, succeed in finding the origin of those high energies? Uh, if not, can we hope it will succeed in the near future? Uh, that's <laughs> that's a, a good question. Uh, maybe I can uh, I can answer Nicolas. Uh, well, this is a question that that is there for more than 60 years. So from since the 1960s that we know that there are particles with uh, energies bigger than uh, 10 times to 20 electron volts. Okay, so this is a long-standing problem. Uh, the, the, um, the result that I've showed you before already allows to constrain these origins. So it's a queer, it's a, and it's a discovery that the source is not our galaxy, it's actually galaxies are other galaxies. Uh, about the future, I would say that uh, probably, okay, the OJ, OJ is, is gathering more data, is, uh, is already, is, is now using um, 
that analysis techniques, which are every are more and more advanced. And uh, I would say that uh, okay, yeah. If I'm optimistic, I would say that in the, in a few years, probably this uh, this question will have uh, will have an answer, uh, and we could uh, exactly discover what are the point sources of of these particles. So the uh, one way has been done, and. Um, uh, Let's see if with the new detectors, so she's entering its phase, so-called phase two, where besides the tanks, we have these scintillators, like Nicole has shown, which give additional information that allow for more advanced analysis. And these these are, are tools that will help us in, in answering this question, and we will do so in the in the near by future, in the next years. Thank you, thank you very much for your question. So now, thank you, Nicholas, uh, once again for the very interesting visit. Now we go for the last part of the um, of the video conference. We're almost finishing, but we'll finish with a quiz. Let me share my screen. Okay. And uh, okay. So just a second. Okay, now we'll start the quiz. For you to be able to participate, you just have to uh, switch on your, uh, your, your mobile phone uh, and uh, have an internet connection. Wait, let's wait for this to, to open. It's taking a few minutes. Let's wait, let's wait for it to open, it should be, it should be fast. <laughs> so this is just a uh, yeah, Raúl. Raúl. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, if you can wait, because we have to to give the uh, the link to the to the students. Yes. 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 We, we'll wait a little bit. Actually, the link will appear on my screen in uh, in a few moments. Let's see if this if this works or not. Uh, it should. Uh, so let me okay it's not working let me just uh, refresh the page see if it, it will work ah, okay yes okay so you have to from your cell phone to access this web page john join my quiz.com and enter the game codes which is this one, 131635. Then you'll have to insert your name or an alias or whatever you like. And then uh, I'll wait uh, just one or two minutes. Okay, we'll see that people are joining already. Okay, I'll wait for, okay, people are starting to join. I'll wait for one or two minutes so that everyone has time to, <laughs> to join. Okay, this is a simple quiz with six questions mm -hmm. for you to be able to test your, your knowledge and participate in this healthy competition. And let's see how, how you score. Okay, we see many people joining, already 23 participants, but people are still joining, so we'll keep waiting. Okay, more than 30. Okay, I see, people, I see that people are still joining. So we can wait just a little bit more. And I see that maybe, maybe that's it, 30, oh, still more, 37. Okay, I have almost 50 participants. I think we'll reach the 50 <laughs> mark, 47. Maybe that's it. 
Okay, I think we are there, 47. So, uh, okay, still more from Wakima, 48. I think we are we are all uh, we all joined. Okay, good. Fifty. Oh yeah, we have fifty. Fifty. So I guess we can start, right? From uh, okay, I see some, some more joining. Okay. Let's begin. We will begin. So <clears throat> let's start the quiz. So the first question is, what are the most energetic particles in the new universe? And you have these four possible answers. Neutrinos from supernovas, ultra-energy cosmic rays, protons accelerated at CERN, or visible light from the sun. Almost everyone has answered. The time is finishing. Okay, time is up. Okay. And the answer was ultra high energy cosmic rays. Okay, we see here the weatherboard. It will be updating. Okay, okay, very well. Most people have answered correctly. Okay. So now we move question. to the next question. Next question. So are you ready? Uh, okay, which experiment marked the discovery of the cosmic rays? Was it S's balloon flights, Rutherford's gold foil, Anderson's cloud chambers, or Millikan's oil drop? Okay. Five seconds left. <laughs> Okay, let's see. So the answer was the the, the flight, obviously, of Vitares, of the balloon flight. So let's see. Most of you got it right. Great. So next question, question number three. <laughs> so the Pierre Observatory covers an area that is the size of a football stadium the size of a small city, larger than Luxembourg, or larger than Argentina? Okay, <laughs> time is up. And actually, the answer was larger than Luxembourg. So the surface detector with the water chunk of tanks are spread for an area that is of about 3,000 square kilometers. So the majority of people got the right answer. And that corresponds to an area that is actually larger than, than countries like Luxembourg. Of course, Argentina is a very big country, not larger than Argentina. But the scale is, is, is that one. It's a very, very large area, which is needed because these particles are very rare. The flux is very low. So um, if we want to gather events on uh, for, uh, if we want to gather events uh, as statistics, we have to have a, a large area in order to be able to, to do it in uh, after a few years. So moving to the next question. So for how long would you have to wait to be hit by an ultra high energy cosmic ray? So of the highest energies, highest at the, that 10 to the 20 electron volts. So we have to wait the blinking of an eye, an hour, your whole life, or 200 million years. Okay, time is up. Let's see. So the answer, maybe surprisingly, is 200 million years. So you had to wait a long, long time for, for a cosmic ray to pass through you. 
Most of you still got it right? Yeah, these are very, very uh, rare events. And uh, so this is, this is the, the time scale. So moving to the next question. <coughs> That is, what would you need to stop a neutrino producing a cosmic ray shower? Something like a sheet of paper, a two meter thick wall of concrete, one white tier of lead. Oh, that is impossible because neutrinos do not interact. Okay, time is almost over. Okay, very well. And the answer was actually about one white year of lead. So you see that when a cosmic ray arrives at the Earth, it will interact on the top of the atmosphere. It will generate uh, a shower of particles. And these shower of particles are particles of every type, uh, or every known type, even neutrinos. And okay, I see that many of you um, answer that neutrinos do not interact, but that's not true. Neutrinos only have what we call weak interactions. They interact very weak with the, with, um, with the matter. Um, and uh, to stop a single neutrino, we need a, a very, very thick, about one light year thick of, of uh, shield of, of lead in order to, um, for it to interact, given that the, its interactions are very, very weak with the matter. Okay, so you, you take this this, this message alone, neutrinos also, also interact and are also producing these cosmic ray showers. So going to the final question. So last question, which of these particles are not produced in cosmic ray showers? Gravitons, antineutrinos, protons, or muons? So the answer was gravitons, of course, because they're the particle that's still left to discover. We don't know if it exists or not yet. So of course they don't appear in, in, in showers, coming ray showers. And most of you got that question right. Okay, so congratulations. So the quiz is over. We'll when the quiz uh, we'll just show the the, the leaderboard. Yes. And we have okay, the, the top three. The top three. Congratulations to our colleagues, which finished the top three. And uh, I hope that uh, that you enjoyed the quiz. I hope that uh, you you liked this master class. The video conference is is over. Uh, thank you very much for your participation, and uh, I just just say bye. 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 Bye, Nicholas. Bye, Constantine. Bye, bye. See you. Bye, bye. 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 Bye, bye